Welcome to Saturday School. This is a weekly segment hosted by the Refuge Temple NC Bible Institute. Just to talk for a few moments on a simple but um, needed topic in the scriptures. Um, we will get our subject from various places. It can come through questions uh, posted to the Bible Institute page, or it can be a topic that somebody would like for us to discuss more in depth. But this week we're continuing in our discussion on the doctrine of salvation. Salvation can be broken up into various subgroups. And for this week, we're going to deal with redemption, and the concept and the meaning of redemption. So before we go into the scriptures dealing with redemption as a part of salvation, I would like to look at the definition. What, what does redemption mean? Well, simply, redemption means the action of redeeming. Redeem means to buy back, free from what distresses or harms, to free from captivity by payment of a ransom, to release from debt or blame, free from the consequences of sin, to free from a lien by payment of an amount secured thereby, um, to remove the obligation of by payment, to exchange for something of value, and finally, to make good. A synonym would be fulfill. So you see there are various related definitions of redemption, and we want to talk about how this applies to the salvation of those who would trust in Jesus Christ to be the source of such salvation and how this redemption was accomplished for us. Because I want you to recall that when it comes to salvation, salvation is something that was applied on our behalf. Amen. It was applied. It was a gift. It was not debt, but it was a gift of God. So the Greek word, which is translated in the New Testament as redemption, is shown right here. It is a polytrosin, and the literal word means ransom in full. I guess you could think of it this way. The payment was made in full. Let's look at the Bible. Where is this word used in the Bible? Well, this word is used in the New Testament in two ways. In our present state, uh, redemption is applied to deliverance from sin. Redemption from the slavery of sin. Redemption from the consequences of our sins. And ultimately, redemption for the body from being corruptible. And corruption simply means being mortal or subject to decay and death. To incorruptible. In other words, our future redemption is ultimately tied to our deliverance from our mortality. Yes, eternal life is a part of salvation as well, not just receiving the Holy Ghost, not just being freed from sin, and not just being born again, walking in the spirit and, and such, but it is truly a deliverance from the power of death. Oh, praise the name of our God. Um, so in Titus 2, 4, it says, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Galatians 3.13, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. 
as it pertains to our future redemption, um, Ephesians 1 and 14 says, which is the earnest of our inheritance. Now it's talking about the gift of the spirit now until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Um, so in this scripture, he's saying the spirit is down payment for the ultimate redemption, which is um, the redemption of the purchased possession, which in this case is the body of Christ itself. All right, Romans 8 and 23. And, and not only they, but we ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit, even we have grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. Oh yes, oh yes, that, that is a part of salvation. That is a part of redemption as well. We're gonna be redeemed. We're gonna be redeemed from mortality itself. From those who will be in Christ, they are a new creature. Old things pass away, all things are made new. That doesn't just apply to our sins and our new walk, but it also applies to our new existence. Amen, and that's something we ought to celebrate. So in application, simply redemption provided through Christ, it satisfies two needs for humanity. First, deliverance from captivity of sin, captivity of death, captivity of even of this mortal life, okay? And it provides liberty in the fact that it frees us Amen. To walk as children of God, it frees us to walk in righteousness and holiness, and it also frees us from the fear of death, knowing that we must put off this tabernacle, but we will put on a new tabernacle made in the heavens. Um, so it's something we ought to celebrate as we continue throughout the Holy Week just to celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must always remember that this redemption costed him. Amen. But it was given on our account um, that we might be redeemed to God and that we may, amen, be redeemed as a redeemed people. Okay, so this is just a little something talking about salvation. Um, thank you for joining us on Saturday School. Next week, we will continue in a new topic um, as it applies to salvation. All right, blessings to all, and we'll see you next week.